Greetings, everyone, and Happy New Year to you. Um, I would like to show with you today about how we can use Design Builder. Uh, I think the basic of it, Design Builder by itself, has a YouTube channel that explains well how to do the modeling. But I want to share with you some practical usage of Design Builder. Here, we're going to talk about how we can validate our experimental data. Uh, for example, if you have an experimental chamber to and test a few materials that you have, maybe insulation or roofing material, and you want to um, test how how much is your percent of error in simulation. You can also use Design Builder. So here today, I'm going to show you going to talk about uh, creating real data weather files. Uh, at the beginning, one of the most important things that I think you might know or you need to know is that. Design Builder use an average 25 year period, I think maybe since 2015, depends on the library, you get a PW file for weather data. However, when you are running your real um, data sets, you will need the exact data of weather files, which you are calculating with or you are recording it by the weather station that you have. But creating it into an EPW file is important. And previously, as I think it will pop out here, and we discuss how we can create the radiation data. Here we're going to discuss more how to create a general EPW file. And then we're going to set up the model. There are a few characteristics that you might need to be careful. And then simulation options. And also, how do we analyze the results? So, first thing first, um, for me to make my better data, I use Elements. It's an application that I think is free for students. You can install it. You can open your uh, one of your EPW files, data that you have, or the city that you're having, maybe from the library of uh, Design Builder. And then you can input your own data. Uh, here you can put your temperature, light bulb, uh, pressure, and everything that you recorded. And uh, for global, um, I have a video that I share here with you. You can see how you can calculate normal and diffuse because these three are interconnected you need at least two of them you if you just put global uh, it won't affect your diffuse and normal so you need to calculate your normal and diffuse to have a correct radiation amount this will highly impact your results in terms of being true so just be careful with that the rest of the data you definitely have it from your weather station just make sure you create it you add it here and then you can export it um, and save it as a and whichever you want bin but usually for design builder epw file is the best so you save it as epw file and then you can open it it will look something like that yes and you can use it here so here i open my design builder and you can set up your location Go to your location. Here you can add your template that you've made. I, may, I named it MTY test. This was in Monterey. So you can upload it here in your um, location template. And there you go. For simulation weather data, just check, make sure it's the same data file because sometimes they are not the same. Um, Yes, you can take that. Okay. And that's about it. Then we will move into modeling. So I'm sure that you know how to model your chamber. I had my image of the chamber here. This was my chamber that we had with the unit. And I modeled it the exact same characteristic with the same size here. And the next thing, the most important thing is that setting up the activities one of the things because this is a chamber is unoccupied you have to check that you are selecting the template right and include all the zones and also remember occupancy you need to turn it off because this is a chamber without any human being so you're turning it all off and we don't have any lighting or computers or anything so next thing that is important is your building construction you can set up your materials here anything that you have here i have a in my world i 
Okay, I have five layers. I have gypsum boards and I have the insulation layer and the structure. There was a, it was a steel structure. There was a gap between it. So I tried to input that to have it more exact because when you are checking the real data, it's very important to make it all correct. And I it was bridged. So, and then in between the bridge, I we, we had put the wool insulation. So that's how I am putting insulation between the iron structure. And then we have another glass ray and some plaster wood. So you can save it. And next thing is opening. I didn't have any opening. It was just um, the fence glazing. And I had no lighting. It was pre-flowed, no HVAC system. Uh, so that was all about our little chamber. It was quite simple chamber. I will go to simulation to set up the options. Okay, here you can select what interval you want. For me, I want it hourly every hour and i also don't there is graphs grids and uh, graph and table i like to grid because I, I don't like to use the inbuilt graphs i like to create my own graphs and do my own data analysis so i, I do it as a grid and then i just go to the option here um, I only have the valid data for two and two to six of August. You can have the annual, you can put it uh, into annual simulation or whichever hour that you want. In the option, however, you have an option, um, time steps, which I suggest if you want more accurate, the higher the time steps per hour, the longer their simulation is going to take. But the, uh, long, the longer it takes, the more accurate your data is. So I suggest a minimum of six when you are doing validation, but also you could go with four. Um, temperature control, um, the air temperature operative, which uh, change your peak hours a lot. And okay, if you have any adjusting buildings and you want to include the shading, you can tick that, but mine was on the rooftop. You didn't have any adjusting building. You can have include shading from excluded zones in the simulation. Also, you have you can also add external reflection, but here I'm not uh, calculating that. Also, for solar distribution, the by default is on full exterior. You can also choose interior and exterior both uh, for reflection. But I'm going with the basics and. Average over the daily um, shadowing interval. This is also suggested by design builder 20 and the sky diffuse system is good. Under the advance, okay, here is the part that is important. You can choose your simulation algorithm, but here, because in my model, I have PCM, I can use finite difference. Um, I need to use CTF for PCM conduction transfer, but if you don't have any PCM, you can go with finite difference. And another important thing that you need to have in mind is always tick include unoccupied zones because especially in this case, we do have unoccupied zones and you won't get your simulation right if you don't select here. I don't have any hitchback, so I didn't put it in. Um, the other parts comfort i will make another video for that here is just um validation and also i want to um compare the surface outputs as well because i also have sensors in the surface temperature which i will need that too so i will take this too. and that's it i will press ok and i let it simulate So here 
I have air temperature, radiant temperature, operative. Mm, the dry bulb is what I give it, it didn't simulate. And I have my surfaces temperature. Yes, so for me to use them, I don't want to use the, okay, here you can see fuse graphs. Okay, I don't want to use that, so sorry. No. I'm going to go with my grids and I will export this as an Excel file. So for analyzing your data, you can use many different um, applications. So this is the file that a design builder will give you. Um, I, for the beauty of it, I used uh, Origin, Origin's um, graphs, which gives me a more beautiful data. But for first stage analysis, it's more comfortable for me to use Excel. You can also use Python or um, R Studio, whichever that suits you well. So I just uh, set in my data and I see how much is the difference between simulation and my real data. So and you, for you also to calculate your error, remember you have to calculate your RMS E and RMS P, P, P. Um, I think that that's all you need to know when you are simulating your experimental data. If you have any question, drop a comment. I would be happy to help. And I hope you have a good day. Bye.